What is a central bank digital currency, or CBDC? Central banks are debating whether or not to issue their own digital currencies to the general people, dubbed Central Bank Digital Currency, or CBDC. Only a few IMF member nations have issued CBDCs or conducted comprehensive pilots or testing, while the bulk of IMF member countries are actively examining CBDCs. But what exactly are these central bank digital currencies? And do they have anything to do with cryptocurrencies? Hey everyone, welcome to Crypto Trends. In today's video, we'll talk about central bank digital currencies. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos. So without further ado, let's get into it. What is a central bank digital currency or CBDC? Central bank digital currencies are digital tokens, similar to cryptocurrency, issued by a central bank. They are based on the value of the country's fiat currency. CBDCs are being developed in a number of nations, and some have already adopted them. Because so many countries are looking into how to make the switch to digital currencies, it's crucial to grasp what they are and what they signify for society. Understanding CBDCs a government-issued currency that is not backed by a tangible commodity, such as gold or silver, is known as fiat money. It is a type of legal money that can be used to buy and sell goods and services. Fiat money was traditionally issued in the form of banknotes and coins, but technological advancements have enabled governments and financial institutions to supplement physical fiat money with a credit-based model in which balances and transactions are digitally recorded. Physical cash is still extensively exchanged and acknowledged. However, its use has declined significantly in several affluent countries, and this trend has increased during the COVID-19 pandemic. The rise of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technologies has heightened interest in cashless societies and digital currencies. As a result, governments and central banks around the world are investigating the use of government-backed digital currencies. These currencies, like fiat money, would have the full faith and backing of the government that issued them if and when they are adopted. Goals of Central Bank Digital Currencies Many people in the United States and many other countries do not have access to financial services. Only 5% of adults in the United States have a bank account. A further 13% of adults in the United States have bank accounts but use costly alternatives such as money orders, payday loans, and check cashing services. CBDC's major purpose is to provide privacy, transferability, simplicity, accessibility, and financial security to businesses and consumers. CBDCs could also minimize the expenses of maintaining a complicated financial system, lower cross-border transaction costs, and provide lower-cost options to people who currently use alternative money transfer methods. Digital currencies issued by central banks would also minimize the dangers associated with utilizing digital currencies in their current form. Cryptocurrencies are extremely volatile, with their value fluctuating continuously. This unpredictability might put many households in financial distress and jeopardize an economy's general stability. CBDCs would provide a stable means of exchanging digital currency to households, consumers, and companies if they were backed by a government and supervised by a central bank. Types of CBDCs CBDCs are divided into two categories, wholesale and retail. Financial institutions are the primary users of wholesale CBDCs. Consumers and businesses use retail CBDCs in the same way they use actual cash. Wholesale CBDCs Holding reserves in a central bank is similar to holding wholesale CBDCs. The central bank establishes an account for an institution to deposit funds or settle interbank transfers. Central banks can then affect lending and set interest rates through monetary policy tools like reserve requirements or interest on reserve holdings. Retail CBDCs Consumers and businesses use retail CBDCs, which are government-backed digital currencies. Retail CBDCs reduce the possibility of private digital currency issues going bankrupt and losing their consumers' money. Individual users access and use their cash in different ways. Following are two of them. Token-based retail CBDCs are accessible with private and public keys. This method of validation allows users to execute transactions anonymously. Account-based retail CBDCs require digital identification to access an account. 
issues CBDCs address and issues that need to be addressed. Although CBDC addresses a number of concerns, there are some hurdles that must be overcome before one can be properly designed and implemented. So, let's take a look at the issues CBDCs address and issues that need to be addressed. Issues addressed by CBDCs Free from credit and liquidity risk Cross-border payment improvements Supports the international role of the dollar Financial inclusion Expands access to the general public Issues that need to be addressed Financial structure changes Financial system stability Monetary policy influence Privacy and protection Cybersecurity Issues a CBDC addresses explained A CBDC eliminates the danger of third-party occurrences such as bank collapses and runs. The central bank is responsible for any remaining risk in the system. High cross-border transaction costs can be reduced by simplifying distribution networks and strengthening government-to-government -government collaboration. The dollar remains the world's most widely used currency. A CBDC in the United States might help the country maintain its leading position. Removes the expense of putting in place a financial framework within a country in order to provide financial access to the unbanked. CBDCs can create a direct link between customers and central banks, obviating the need for costly infrastructure. Issues that need to be addressed explained. In the case of the United States, the financial structure of the country could shift dramatically. Same is true for other countries as well. It's unclear how a change would affect household spending, investments, banking reserves, interest rates, the financial services industry, or the economy. The impacts of switching to CBDC on the stability of a financial system are uncertain. During a financial crisis, for example, there may not be enough central bank liquidity to allow withdrawals. Monetary policy is used by central banks to impact inflation, interest rates, lending, and expenditure all of which affect employment rates. Central banks will have to make sure they have the instruments they need to affect the economy in a favorable way. One of the most important drivers of cryptocurrencies is privacy. CBDCs would necessitate a reasonable level of government intrusion to monitor for financial crimes. Monitoring is also vital since it aids efforts to prevent money laundering and terrorism financing. Cryptocurrencies have been the target of hackers and thieves on multiple occasions, as has been seen. A central bank-issued digital currency would undoubtedly attract the same type of criminals, necessitating major efforts to avoid system penetration and theft of assets and information. CBDCs versus Cryptocurrencies Cryptocurrency ecosystems offer a glimpse of an alternative financial system in which transaction terms are not dictated by onerous rules. They're difficult to copy or forge, and they're protected by consensus processes that prevent manipulation. On the other hand, digital currencies are related to cryptocurrencies but do not necessarily require blockchain technology or consensus procedures. Cryptocurrencies are also decentralized and unregulated. Investor attitudes, usage, and user interest all influence their worth. They are speculative assets that are more volatile, making them unsuitable for use in a financial system that requires stability. On the other hand, CBDCs are supposed to be stable and safe by mirroring the value of fiat currency. Final thought. It's true that CBDCs have already been launched in a few countries, including the Bahamas, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Montserrat, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, and even Nigeria. Even more, several countries such as the United States, India, Sweden and Jamaica are investigating them. This means that they can possibly be the future of money, and a lot bigger than the current crypto market. So, what are your thoughts about central bank digital currencies? And can CBDCs be the future of finance? Please, let us know your opinions in the comment section down below. With that being said, here we come to the end of our video. I hope you like this video. If so, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss any video. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Thanks for watching.